I had an odd comment added to my last video, the one about the healthy soil in potted plants, and I felt it was important enough to do a whole video about it. The question was, is synthetic fertilizer safe for growing food, things like vegetables in your garden? The person making the comment was really asking, how safe is synthetic chemicals? After all, we, we know chemicals are dangerous to everyone, right? No, wrong, very wrong. But in this specific case, are the chemicals in synthetic fertilizer safe? Now, I have a chemistry background, and to me, this is quite a ridiculous question. But I also know that when we look at the general population, a lot of people are now convinced that chemicals are harmful. This is largely the result of the organic movement, which has misinformed so many people. The question was not really a surprise, and I see similar comments all the time. For example, synthetic fertilizers kill microbes. If you use synthetic fertilizers, plants don't grow as well. Food grown with synthetic fertilizers is not as nutritious, and it doesn't taste as good. None of these comments are correct. Now, the fundamental facts are that the chemicals found in synthetic fertilizers are identical to the nutrients that are released by organic fertilizer. Those chemicals are found in every living organism, everything from plants to microbes to humans. We all have these same chemicals in our bodies and none of us could exist without them. There is no single lab in the world that can take nitrate, phosphate, potassium from any fertilizer and show that it came from organic or synthetic sources. And plants don't care, and microbes don't care. Why? Because they're identical. Now, I know some of you out there are still doubting me. So I thought of an example to prove to you that they're the same. I'm going to compare a banana, which we know is healthy, to synthetic fertilizer, and have a look at what's inside. Here's the chemical analysis of banana, and I took this from a research paper that looked at a variety of different bananas, both in ripe stage and unripe stage. And these are some of the results that they reported. You can see that bananas have potassium, that's the K, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, iron, copper, zinc, and manganese. These are all the things found in bananas. Now you might wonder, well, what about nitrogen? Isn't that found too? Well, it is, but they report nitrogen as protein. And protein is uh, somewhere around 20% nitrogen. That's just the way chemists like to report this value. So now let's have a look at a synthetic fertilizer that's made by Proven Winters. Well, it contains nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. Now, most of those nutrients are also found in bananas, but there are a couple unusual ones here. The first one that wasn't listed in bananas is boron. And you might be familiar with boron because that's an important part of borax. And we use borax to kill ants in the garden. So it might be toxic to us. Do bananas contain boron? And the answer is yes, they do. And in fact, it plays an important role in plants in helping produce strong cell walls and cell division and root development. In fact, it's important in all plants, but it's usually found in very low concentration. And I think that's why it wasn't reported in the scientific study. Well, what about humans? Uh, is it good for us? This comes from WebMD. Boron is an important element that's found in most fruits and vegetables. And it's important in our daily diet. We can't produce boron, but it is important to make other compounds. So we have to ingest some of it. The other compound that was in the fertilizer but wasn't listed in the banana is something called molybdenum. Or if you want to remember how to spell it, pronounce it molybdenum. Well, it turns out that bananas actually have quite a bit of this stuff. And in fact, a medium banana will provide about one-third of your daily requirements of it. Again, it's one of those nutrients that we don't have a lot of in our bodies, but we do need a little bit. And the same goes for plants. 
So most of the things in this fertilizer are also found in healthy bananas. Let's have a look at another fertilizer. This is the chemical analysis for Jack's fertilizer. And you'll see it's not that different from the previous one. It contains nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur. Oh, well, sulfur's a new one. Boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. So this one includes some extra sulfur. Is that healthy for us? And do bananas contain sulfur? It wasn't on the banana list. It actually is on the list of compounds found in bananas, but it's labeled differently. Sulfur is an important ingredient in two amino acids, methione and cysteine, and those are vital for our health. So bananas do contain sulfur, and the fertilizer contains sulfur, and those amino acids are critical for our health. Now, if you read the fine print on this chemical analysis, you'll see at the bottom mention of EDTA, and this is found in a lot of water-soluble fertilizers. It's a compound that keeps the ions from clumping together, from attaching to things. It keeps the irons available for plants to use. So EDTA can be fairly important in a fertilizer. Is EDTA healthy for us? And can you find it in bananas? I got this from the WebMD website. You can get EDTA naturally from foods. And here's a list of foods, sodas, canned fruits and vegetables, non-nutritive sweeters, condiments like mayonnaise, salad dressings. The FDA says EDTA is considered safe for use in foods in the U.S. Now what happens to EDTA if we apply it to the soil around plants? Do plants absorb EDTA? Well, it turns out they actually don't. So the EDTA found in synthetic fertilizers is not only safe for us to eat, and in fact, we add it to a number of different manufactured foods, but if we add it to our soil as fertilizers, plants don't absorb it, so it really isn't an issue. Now, the other ingredient in synthetic fertilizer that's not listed on labels are the fillers. If you add up all the nutrients in there, it doesn't come to 100%. So there's always a certain amount of that fertilizer that's other things. In dry fertilizers, that filler a lot of times is things like sand and other inert materials. In soluble fertilizers, it's kind of hard to find out what the filler is. But some of the items that are used are different types of clay, like bentonite clay different forms of silica and silica gel. Now those two aren't soluble, so you would see those once you dissolve it in water. The other item that can be used in water-soluble products is sucrose. And they also add small amounts of other chemicals to keep the solids from clumping together. These inert fillers are not a health concern. In most cases, they won't be absorbed by the plants, so it's really not a health issue. And if they use something like sucrose, then the microbes in the soil will gobble that up as a food source. All right, so I've compared synthetic fertilizers to bananas, and the things we find in synthetic fertilizers are also found in bananas, and none of the items are toxic or harmful to our health. In fact, we have to consume those nutrients to be healthy. We need nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, and so on, just like the plants do. This idea that just because something is synthetic, it's toxic to us, makes no sense from a chemical perspective. I hope I've convinced you. Stop believing everything you hear about the problems with synthetic chemicals. Being synthetic tells you nothing about the safety of a chemical. Now, it's true some synthetic chemicals are very toxic, but it's also true that organic compounds are also toxic. Just think about ricin, which is a natural component in castor beans. It's one of the most toxic compounds on earth, and it's organic and completely natural. Now, if you missed my last video about creating healthy soil in pots and why that's not important, have a look at this video here. And if you want to select a good fertilizer for your house plants, have a look at this. Happy garden.